finally being here after yeah. all the hoops you've had to jump through the last couple of seasons to try and play baseball this feels like baseball it certainly does i i think back to the last couple of years from, you know, from covid and coming out of covid and the realities of stops and starts our lockout last year this is the first true winter and into spring training that's felt like we knew exactly what was coming and i think our players really prepared themselves for that you look at the list of players you got them on your wall in there of everybody who's here what you're looking at do you see anything that jumps out at you that man i could really use x you know i look at the team and i think it's among the deepest groups that we've had at any point during my tenure here in minnesota you know we think about the upside that's on the field obviously a lot's made of byron and carlos and other kind of key up the middle players but when I see Christian Vasquez come through the door and see what he brings to the team and his experience and leadership, when I think about the back end of our bullpen and, and how good Duran and Lopez and Thielbar and Jax and those guys looked at the end of last year, that feels really good. You know, I think about our bench right now and the depth that we have. When you have guys like Kyle Farmer and Michael Taylor, who might be a little bit more in the depth of relative to our starting lineup right now on the field, uh, this feels about as good a group as we have. Let's stay healthy. Let's make sure we progress well toward the start of the season. But I feel really good about where we are. When you look at Correa and him walking back in here, how much did that elevate everyone around? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot was made of what Carlos is on the field. And certainly we know what he can be as a player. But as you're pointing out, Jim, I think what really stands out for us is how much he impacts everyone in that room as well. You know, he's already talking with young players, guys who are in their first major league camp. You think of a kid like Brooks Lee, who we took in the first round last year. He's close to Carlos in the clubhouse and, and in his locker space, and they're already having those conversations. It's not just the Jose Mirandas and young big league players that he has the ability to influence. It's so many of the players across our organization that hopefully will be a part of our team, not just in next year, but in the many years to come. Does a signing like that maybe send a message to the rest of baseball that, I mean, because you're swinging with the big boys yep. when it comes to contracted cash. Yeah, I certainly what I think it says for us and the way we think about it and all we can control is ourselves is we're here to compete. We're trying to find a way to put a great team on the field for our fans. It's a credit to the Polad family and their leadership and their investment in this team that we have now. We're able to go out there and compete with some of the best guys in free agency, in the markets, because we're trying to put a good team on the field that's going to go out and compete and win. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. That roller coaster ride, you know, on ESPN.com, they have that win percentage, you know, that goes way up to 90% and then it was down to here. <laughs> Where was that win percentage during that pursuit of Carlos in your mind? Oh, gosh. You know, I've been on the wrong side of those game by game <laughs> ones, too, when I'm in a 98, 99% win and then three runs get given up in the ninth and you're like, what just happened? It was nice to be on the other side for once in a while, right? To maybe have uh, what felt like just a faint heartbeat left, you know, to a negotiation, but ultimately come all the way back to be in a good spot. I think it's a, it's a credit to Carlos, to his agents, and ultimately to our collective group and to ownership to be able to stay in touch, stay engaged. You never know where things are going to go. The relationship has to be pre-built in order to be able to speed that up at the end and know this is the right place for Carlos. I felt in my heart this was always the right place for him. I think he did too. Ultimately, it's, the free agency process took him different turns, but I feel like we ended exactly where we were supposed to end up. Last year with Byron Buxton, there was a plan mm -hmm. to help him get through things. You bring in Michael A. Taylor. Is that part of the plan for Buxton? Will he be watched like he was last season? Yeah, in many ways, Byron was coming off of years where he had not reached certain plate appearances and in, in games. Ultimately, had more games last year than he's had in, in multiple seasons prior. We know the impact he can make on the field. We know how important it is to keep him healthy and on the field. As we enter this season, we're really excited about where he is. Our approach is get him ready for opening day however we need to do that. That'll be thoughtful through the course of spring training like it is with any of our other players. But adding someone like Michael A. Taylor, a gold glove center fielder, someone who can make a huge impact on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball, that only adds to our depth and allows us to maybe give a Byron a day at DH and give him a day along the way when we know we still have elite defense in center field. So our, it's a deeper group than we've ever had before. We're going to try and find a way to utilize all of them, but Byron is still going to be central to us having any level of success. But that's what I mean. This protects Rocco and you guys when you make the decision. Geez, we, we got a big series here, but, you know, we could really give him a blow here. So this kind of all fits in the plan, like you said, the depth to make the decisions easier. 
Definitely. We've always looked at our team. The best thing that we can do, obviously we dealt with it as, as bad as I've ever dealt with in my career around injuries late in the season. But you always need to have that next level of protection. And, and what does that look like? For us, some of that's players that are already on the field that can move to other positions. Some of our guys and our rosters built in a way that allows us to plug guys in different spots. But adding a Michael A. Taylor, adding a Kyle Farmer, these are guys that can go play in multiple positions and have played really effectively at the major league level for a long time. So we feel our group is, is deep, which should allow us to give that guy a day off from time to time, to give another player a day off and be able to keep a very competitive group out there on the field. What's that guy doing over there? Is he about, do you see if he can stop for two seconds? Do you hear that, Jared, or not? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Could be just a trash removal. Maybe you could just give us two minutes. Is there anything you want to get out? No, or I don't think so. You got? No, you, okay. know, you mean you know it all. It's, I feel like the group's in a good spot. So. Okay, he's got it. All right. All right. Um, you look at the relationship between Byron and Carlos, and they're professing love for each other. <laughs> Does that surprise you that those two have bonded the way they have? You know, it doesn't surprise me because I got to see it live last year, how it all came together and one thing I really I think back to coming out of the lockout when Carlos came into our clubhouse there was a unique moment at the front end of this where I think he was asked the question you know, is this your team you're obviously a leader everything you've done and he very specifically said this is Byron's team he knew what Byron meant to this organization what he meant to the to whole team and what he meant inside that clubhouse him deferring a bit to Byron and that allowed Byron to invite Carlos right back in and you could see from that day forward there was this deep connection built. They're very different in the way they lead. They're very different in the way they operate in the clubhouse. I think it's great. They complement each other so well. So I feel like those two, clearly what they do on the field is special, and that will contribute to what we're doing, ultimately, hopefully, to lead to success. But beyond that, I think what they do in the clubhouse elevates everybody else around them, and hopefully that will make a difference over the course of many years to come. Now, many people want to see a big name pitcher, mm -hmm. right? But you have so many options. Can you explain your thought process this offseason and how you decided to move Luis to get another arm in here? What you envision this staff being this year? Yeah, I'm really excited about the way the staff is coming together right now. We have some young guys that stepped up last year and got better. You watch a Joe Ryan continue to blossom as a young pitcher. You see a Louis Varlin come up and help us at the end of the year. Bailey Ober's been nothing but good when he's been here at the major league level, but we knew we wanted to add some experience and mix in some guys. Kenta Maeda coming back, and this is a guy just a couple short years ago finished second in the Cy Young. We feel pitches right toward the top of any rotation, but a healthy Sonny Gray, a healthy, healthy Tyler Maley, then you add in a guy like Pablo Lopez, and we feel like these are guys that all deepen our group. There's always the hunt for that one true ace, that one top guy. There's so few of them across the game, ultimately, we need our guys to step up, work well together, and ultimately elevate an entire pitching staff to give us the best chance to win night in and night out. And I feel we have that right now. Where's Maeda at? Can he go opening day if that's what Rocco chooses? Yeah, fortunately for us, had we been in a better position competitively at the end of last year, we were very much planning on could there be a way which Kenta could pitch out of the bullpen in the playoffs. So that tells you just really where he was from a health standpoint going back to last October. He had a great offseason, a regular offseason. Nick Paparas, our head athletic trainer, said to us, we're treating him just like an every pitcher who came into camp. He's fully healthy. He's ready to go. He'll go whenever Rocco schedules him to, to take the ball. For years, it was the M&M boys. That was before your time, but sure. you know who it was, oh, Maurer yeah. and Morneau. You look at Lee and you look at uh, Lewis. Are those... The L and L boys. <laughs> I hope so. I hope they're joining whatever we're calling the Correa and Buxton duo, and, and so many other good young players across our organization. I think that both Brooks Lee and Royce Lewis are going to be big parts of our future, and I know they're both shortstops now, and they'll continue to develop that skill in playing middle of the diamond. But I'll, I'll say this: you never have too many good shortstop, good athletes that can go play positions across the field, whether they end up different spots on the dirt or in a different spot on the field. If they're playing to their abilities, which we know they can, they're only going to deepen our group and hopefully build the, the position player club we're looking for. Anything in the rule changes that jump out at you that you think you had to tinker with your lineup or how you play this season versus previous? Well, I think one of the things that we targeted at the outset, we knew we had an open catching position. Ryan Jeffers is someone we feel really good about that's continuing to grow and is a good young player. 
but having someone like Christian Vasquez who controls the running game, who understands the running game as well as anybody, that's a difference maker for us. And I think that we targeted him early. He was our first signing. He was someone we really wanted to get into camp and get in the fold. He helps manage maybe an increase in the running game that we might see as a result of these rule changes. He's back. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> All right, uh, last one for you about this team. And this year the schedule is way different, mm -hmm. right? And I don't want to say on paper, but you know sure. what I'm talking about. There's the perception that you had a softer schedule. How much more difficult could this season be? Again, it's all on paper. You don't know what sure. your opponent's going to trot out that specific day. But on t paper, this looks like a much more difficult schedule. Well, it's certainly changed. And I think that when we look at that, e with every change comes a new opportunity. We think our division's really good. Cleveland's been good for a number of years. We think that Chicago White Sox team, much like us last year, probably looks at their performance relative to their talent and felt like they came short of where they should be. We think we are a talented cl club that can go out. And then you look at Kansas City and Detroit that have a, a lot of good young players that could step forward and grow. So ultimately changing into some games outside of the division and having a, few, a little bit more of a balanced schedule across the league, we'll have to see how it plays out. But at the end of the day, you got to play the games that they give you. And if you play well enough, and if we play to our abilities, hopefully we'll put ourselves in a good position late September to compete for a playoff spot. Last, last question. Yeah. How disappointed were you with the way it ended last year, and how much did that fuel you this offseason? Or did you think, you know what, if we kept the pieces in place, we would have gotten that thing all the way home? Yeah, you know, we, we held first place for a good chunk of the year. And anytime you do that uh, for over 100 games of a season, you're hopeful that you're playing really meaningful games late into the month of September and ultimately, obviously, into October. That was disappointing, that was frustrating. The health of our club, ultimately the performance there at the end was not what we wanted. It fuels you every day, it has to, right? If you're not, do if it doesn't fuel you, you probably should get out of this business at this point. So it, it made us look at our team, it made us think about our process. How do we keep guys on the field more? How do we stay healthier? What can we do to improve the overall resources around the club and what can we add to it? But it, what I think it tells us is that we didn't spend the whole year you know, in last place in the division. We felt this had talent on this team. It proved it for a good chunk of the year. Now if we can keep it healthy, we've added to it. We feel this is a good group. Nothing's given to us. We've got to go. Cleveland won the division last year. That means they're the favorites. They are there. We need to go find a way to, to, to climb ourselves back to the top. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. You got it. Appreciate it. No problem. Anytime.